The Hodeng Township Economic Development Act seeks to facilitate and promote inclusive economic growth along a transformative paradigm in order to build a cohesive and more equal society. Now this act is underpinned by a growing and inclusive economy that harness the potential of all people in the Republic who reside in Hauden province. Hi, Sudumelang, a very good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, uh, we'll look at the Township Economic Development Act with a spotlight on Ekuruleni and the work uh, being done uh, in that uh, community of Katlehong to also grow and further uh, that sector. Now, to kick start the conversation, we join in studio by Family Tree Holdings Chairperson Sipom Tembu to tell us more about uh, the work that they do and also to respond uh, to allegations that have been leveled against them and their partners. Uh, Sipom, much appreciated for joining us this evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Much appreciated. I mean, you know, before we get into, you know, the crux of the matter, uh, let's start by just uh, looking at uh, the work that you do as Family Tree and also, um, you know, your relationship with the Katharas uh, Shop Owners Association. Okay. Uh, in a nutshell, Family Tree is an enterprise development platform and we cover about four areas, mm. uh, being infrastructure support, skills development, compliance support, and access to markets and access to funding. So that covers our model in its entirety. Mm. So what uh, kind of work has this partnership, uh, you know, has been focusing on? I mean, you are highlighting uh, the very few aspects oh. of uh, the enterprise and, and, and stuff, but uh, what have you achieved uh, uh, thus far? We've done quite a lot, actually, uh, in the last uh, two years, three years. Um, We've built uh, about three distribution centers. So I would say two distribution centers and one mini distribution center. Yeah. To be more accurate or else they will say, yeah, you said that. And then <laughs> we've built a number of bakeries mm. as well. We've refurbished quite a lot of stores. And I think maybe on the matter of refurbishment of stores, I need to explain that not all stores are refurbished the same way. It all depends on the availability of budget. Mm. Uh, but some stores were just painted because at the time when the project was happening, the funds that were available were sufficient for that. But other stores are painted and they got ceilings and tiling and shelving as well. Mm. So um, the Kasim Noto program, um, you know, what exactly is that? And also, um, I, I want to understand the purpose that it serves, uh, you know, uh, in uh, the community. And also, maybe we can talk about the role of uh, uh, partnerships, especially looking at government also uh, coming into the fold when you are doing programs. Okay, let's start with partnerships. So uh, you, you'd realize that government does not have sufficient capacity to deliver on a number of projects that they have. So in order to extend that capacity, then government partners with private sector mm -hmm. and Family Tree being one of those private sector partners that are then tasked almost as an extension uh, of government to say, you bring a set of skills, you bring uh, some sort of funding, as well and then you help us to implement mm -hmm. in this instance the Township Economic Development Act in particular because that's where the relationship is and coming to the Kasim Noto program so there's Kasim Noto program and there's Kasim Noto fund so the program is an overall overarching program that uh, includes skills development so there's a lot of training yeah uh, maybe I didn't mention we've trained close to 15, 20,000 people, I don't know on top of my head. But the skills development, skills development we focus on both technical and non-technical training. For example, we've got a group of manufacturers, about 45 of them that are on a two-year program, it's about to end this year. And then we also have, we took uh, another batch, about 80 mm. to Gibbs, Pretoria University, to be trained on entrepreneurial skills. And then we've got short entrepreneurial skills programs as well, like two days, five days programs that we do in partnership with FACET 
as well. That's on skills development. And then if you move out from skills development, then you've got infrastructure support. This talks to refurbishment of shops, for example. Yeah. And it also talks to setting up of premises. For example, in the bakery program where we had to set up the bakeries from scratch. So you literally put in all the necessary infrastructure, including equipment and machinery as well. And then, then once that is done, then you also then talk to compliance support, uh, where you then look at where they are in terms of compliance and what kind of support can be provided. And then, of course, support with access to funding as well. And it's important that I highlight this point. I'm saying support to access to funding, not to provide funding. Uh, we're going to pocket this, Sipo. Yeah. We, we will get to the issues of funding after the ad break. Um, um, my guest this evening is the chairperson of the Family Tree Holdings, Sipom Tembu, who joins us this evening with the purpose of clarifying the current state of affairs as far as Family Tree Holdings and the Kathoros Shop Owners Association. Also, just touching more on the programs that uh, they have uh, uh, in the enterprise there. We continue the conversation with him after the ad break. Do you stay with us? Welcome back, you're still watching So to Today. Much appreciated for joining us this evening. My name is Tabo Molokwane. Now, before the ad break, we started the conversation on township economic development uh, with the focus in Ekuruleni through taking a look at the Kataros Shop Owners Association and the Family Tree Holdings and the work that they've been doing in the sector and the community. We continue the conversation with Chairperson of Family Tree Holdings, Sipom Tembu, to find out uh, the latest developments and what has been happening that has garnered the attention of political party Build One South Africa there. Uh, Sipo, much appreciated for staying on. I want us to address this issue now. I mean, um, maybe you can take us through the allegations that were made by uh, Bosa there. Um, you, you know, your response uh, to this. I will just uh, highlight just a few of them. I mean, they are alleging that um, um, the, fund, the, 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 the enterprise has used over three million uh, to create just five jobs. Uh, they're also saying that, uh, you know, there are corruption, there is corruption that is happening uh, within the enterprise. Uh, there's no funding to entrepreneurs who are, uh, you know, eligible there. And also they're talking about, um, um, you know, the entrepreneurs also being victimized uh, for asking questions, uh, especially about the funding. Maybe if you can, maybe just clarify these allegations for us, what is going on? Okay, let's start with the three million story. Uh, you, you know, for me, it's, it's quite a funny story because the full, the full allegation is that we were given three million to build two distribution centers mm -hmm. and we created five jobs. And my response is standard. That's ridiculous. How do you build a distribution, two distribution centers with three million? So one distribution center is 1.5 million. If you just check now, just building a supermarket is going to cost you about 4.5 million to 6 million. So I don't know where they got the numbers, but it just does not make economic sense mm -hmm. to me, number one. So immediately tells you that uh, there's no such. And then the issue of five jobs, uh, my explanation is that maybe people don't understand how a distribution center or even a shop, a supermarket works. There is no way on earth you could have a distribution center. Uh, because if it's two distribution centers and it's five jobs, it means the one has three and the other one has two. Because mm. there's no two and a half person. But how does it work? In the distribution center, you've got cashiers in front. Usually there are two or three. You've got uh, admin staff at the back. And then you've got the receiving side that receive goods as they come in. And then you've got cleaners. And then you've got packers. You've already seen just those positions. It's already way more than five. Mm. And that's one shop. So it shows to me lack of understanding of how a shop operates. So I, I, I want to understand something. So um, are you saying that, uh, you know, uh, these allegations are unfounded? Uh, and also, I mean, um, have you received funding? 
from uh, yes, we uh, have. you know how the um, uh, economic development uh, department there and also um, to what tune and also what have you done with the funding have you uh, you've explained earlier on that uh, you have actually you know assisted uh, businesses uh, you know in terms of refurbishment and other things but uh, I want to know are you saying that these allegations are unfounded they do not know what they're saying they are entirely not true mm. uh, I don't even know who's the source or what's the source of the information but for me you know it's one of those, when you receive information, verify it. Mm. Don't make allegations before verifying. Verify, establish the true facts, and then you can go public. And check the source. There's so many fake news that are doing rounds now. Fact check uh, what is being said to you before you go into public. That's my response to you. And yes, I can confirm to you, yes, we've been receiving funding. Uh, all these things that I mentioned earlier, yeah. they are funded somehow. And they are funded by money from the Gauteng Department of Economic Development and money is that we've raised as Family Tree. Yeah, from private so, donors. Yes. Yeah. So we've jointly raised money. Not, no, not, not from private sector in this instance. Uh, again, we're confusing a different form of funding. So yeah. there is the Kasim Noto Fund, which probably we'll talk about it later. But this is just the normal funding that is received to run the program. And then the Kasim Noto Fund is completely different animal. It's not even a grant. And that's what we've been accused of spending, the 100 million. Mm. I think I need to clarify that one, it's not a grant. Yeah. So there's no way on earth. And then that creates a false perception. Kasim Noto Fund is a loan. And how it works is that our government issued a loan of 50 million to Family Tree and Family Tree was then expected to raise its own 50 million, which we raised through Absa Bank. And that is 50 million. Yeah. So that makes you 100 million. Now that money has not been dispersed at all. We have not distributed it. And the reason why it has not been dispersed is because of the funding criteria. So when the fund was initially structured and developed, it was along the lines of conventional banking practice the credit bureau scores yeah. and all of those things. And over time we realized that it's not working. And then we've gone back to the drawing board, renegotiated with the investors into the fund. And now we've got a new structure, lowered barriers of entry and simplified way to access the fund. Sibo, in the interest of time, because uh, we're running out of time, I want to ask you this question. So the allegations of uh, victimization against the people that are trying to ask questions uh, regarding the funding process, uh, you're saying that they're also unfounded because no. they, 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 there's no truth to that. That's what you're saying. Um, also, what happens now? Uh, will there be any legal recourse for you? Uh, you know, against Bosa, particularly looking at the allegations that uh, they've been pinning uh, on you as an organization. And also, um, how do we make sure that, uh, you know, these communities um, understand the work that you do uh, as you're saying that, look, uh, we are there for the people? So firstly, let me acknowledge, uh, first, before I respond on that, I want to acknowledge that, look, the, fund, the program is not perfect. Yeah. And it's important that I acknowledge that. And there is, for example, some of complaints that are genuine. And we've taken note of that and we recognize those genuine complaints. And we encourage community members to follow proper channels when they've got complaints. Because, look, it's the first time a program of this structure and scale is implemented in the whole country, not mm. even just in the province. So, of course, there will be learning mistakes that are made. So we acknowledge that first. But uh, victimizing of people for asking questions, that's absolutely not true. And I'm not going to mention the name of an individual because I know who you're referring to. If me refusing to employ somebody's wife because they got a bad referral is victimization, then I don't know what it is. And then you ask me about legal recourse, we don't believe in rushing to the lawyers. Yeah. We believe in dialogue. So the starting point is to have dialogue with Bosa, see if we can find each other, 
clarify any misconception, and probably jointly develop a remedial action where there's genuine complaints. So we're not going to be rushing to the lawyers. Those are last resort if we can't find each other, but we're not yet there. Where we are now, it's a question of sitting down, having a conversation, clearing whatever it is, and separate fact from fiction. Simple, much appreciated for joining us. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. We will also be talking to Bosa just to get uh, exactly what is the issue, uh, particularly looking at these allegations that, uh, you know, uh, they have, uh, you know, uh, pinned on you as uh, an enterprise. But much appreciated for clarifying that and coming to the show this evening. Thank you. Sibom Tembu, the chairperson of the Family Tree Holdings, speaking to us more about the latest developments as well as allegations that have been leveled against them and the Kathura's Shop Owners Association. We're going to park it there for now. So it's today returns on the other side of this. Welcome back to Soweto Today. Much appreciated for joining us this evening. We are getting closer to the end of the show, but we continue the conversation on township economic development with a spotlight on the Ekurileni District Family Tree Holdings and the Kathoras uh, Shop Owners Association. Now we welcome Build One South Africa's Communications Director, Ayanda Ali, to share their stance on the matter and what they make of the latest developments. She joins us via Zoom this evening. Ayanda, much appreciated for joining us. Welcome to the show. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much for having us and good evening to your viewers. Much appreciated. Ayanda, I mean, uh, as far as Busa is concerned, uh, you know, I want to understand what are the key problems and challenges that you have noted as far as Family Tree Holdings, you know, Kathara's Shop Owners Association and the Houteng Department of uh, Economic Development. Because earlier on, we did speak to them and, and you know, they have dismissed uh, your allegations saying that, look, they are saying that they are unfounded. Uh, what do you have to say about that? I think the last time you and I spoke, I was comms director since I've been upgraded to being a member of the provincial legislature. And with that upgrade came a certain level of responsibility that allowed me to appeal to people in Gauteng to come forward with any information that they have at their disposal that they think could improve service delivery in any facet. And with that call came forward a number of people from that Kataras area who said they were struggling with economic development as it pertained to to Katara Shop Owners Association and Family Tree. These people were entrepreneurs who had their own spaza shops. Some of them, um, their spaza shops were doing fairly modestly well. Mm -hmm. Others, they were really struggling. But the bottom line was that they had then been approached by Family Tree via Kataras, and they were promised all sorts of things from training to groceries to uh, refurbishment of their uh, infrastructure and a whole lot of other things, including grants and loans. And that did not happen. So they came forward to build one south africa to say please can you be of assistance help us to research this matter and find out where the money is subsequent to that we went to the Gauteng provincial legislature where i currently serve and the legislature showed us that there have been similar findings by our previous administration's uh, education uh, economic development committee and that committee of the sixth administration found that there is a reason for us to look into the relationship between family tree and Gauteng De uh, department of economic development and it is based on those findings now uh, Kataras and Family Tree can dismiss Bosa all they want to, they can dismiss Ayanda all they want to, and they can dismiss even the shop owners if they want to, but they cannot dismiss the findings of the previous committee into economic development, the findings which called for a forensic investigation into the relationship between Family Tree and Gauteng Department of Economic Development. That is irrefutable. That, are, that is the findings of a committee that was adopted by the Gauteng Provincial Legislature. That's irrefutable. Mm. I, and, uh, you know, I'm interested in finding out from you. Um, they did touch on the issue saying that, look, uh, uh, you know, as part of your allegations, I mean, uh, you, you know, you spoke about no funding to, to entrepreneurs, irrespective of their... Uh, you know, eligibility to receive that funding. But, uh, you know, when I spoke to the chairperson, they're saying that, look, uh, their duty as uh, an enterprise is to just provide support, nothing else. They, uh, you know, they don't provide funding to the people. I mean, how true is that? So they were um, brought into the picture to be implemented. Of the 
starting do pardon me, I think there was a call coming in as I'm trying to multitask. So Family Tree was brought in to be an implementing agent for the Gauteng Department of Economic Development. Yeah. Now, the department had brought about what is known as the Township Economic Development Act, and that act needed implementation. They brought forth a, a number of players. One of them is Family Tree. The job of Family Tree was to help your entrepreneurs in the township to become eligible and to qualify and to therefore receive the assistance. Now, if their version of events is to be believed, which is that, oh, these entrepreneurs just simply don't qualify and that's why they've not received money, we've done our job and tough, then it means they failed. Because Family Tree, by their own words, on their website, say they're in black and white, if you don't qualify, do not worry. We will assist you. We will take you to training. We will help you fill out the uh, requisite forms. We will do all in our power to make sure that you qualify because that is our mandate. So if they're saying the funds didn't reach the entrepreneurs because the entrepreneurs don't qualify, then they must admit that they failed in the implementation of this program. That mm. is the sole reason why they were brought on board, which is to help your entrepreneurs access these funds. So if they're saying there are no funds received because uh, entrepreneurs don't qualify, then they must admit that by their own version of events, they have failed. Now, uh, Ayanna, on Monday, a briefing that was led by yourselves, uh, Bosa, and uh, you know uh, your leader there, Musi Maimani, was disrupted. I mean, maybe you can tell us what happened there and what was supposed to have been shared that couldn't be delivered as intended as a result. And also, how prevalent is the issue of extortion uh, uh, in, 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 in Ekuruledi? So because we were approached by the entrepreneurs in Ekuruledi, it's so important that we constantly provide feedback to them how far we are in terms of carrying their issues to the Gauteng Provincial Legislature, uh, what sort of turnaround time they can expect from the committees and the, the House and the recommendation thereof. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. We're not going to have a, a media briefing that's for people of Kataras in Santon. We're not going to have it in some ivory tower or the upper echelons of society. We need to take the information back to the people who sent us and that is why we were on the ground on that day to give feedback to say the house has finally agreed that they will follow up on the issue of that forensic investigation and they've given until the end of october for those results to be made known that was the feedback that we needed to give to the people and those who had gathered there were ready to receive that information the day or two before that press briefing i approached the certain the gentleman known as Mzambia in the township there of katara shop owners association yeah. and i told him that we're going to be having a media briefing if you would like to come forward because his bone of contention has always been oh we don't give him right of reply i said come and become part of that uh, uh, media briefing so you can give us your your input in the way you see things he said he would be there but on the day when i asked him again and i saw him and i said come here is your seat take a seat he declined that and he decided rather to come with people to disrupt to chant to sing to uh, push and shove and do all sorts of things to try and delay the start of the the, the briefing when when the briefing started despite his theatrics, that's when he decided, oh, no, now he wants to grab a mic and to speak, which I thought was very unbecoming. A person of that caliber and of that stature, as a leader, you ought to lead by example. Come to the discussions and have a conversation and say what you want to say. So it was very unfortunate that they, they chose not to take us up. And when they saw that we proceeded, they then uh, decided that they want to disrupt. Um, it, it is to be you know um, understood that when people start uh, being exposed, they are going to turn to violence. When people start saying that the taps are going to run dry and that their corruption is going to be revealed, they're going to be pushed into a corner and there's no telling how they will react. Therefore, you know, when they started using violence and, and all manner um, of theatrics, we, we understood that it was because finally uh, the chickens have come home to roost. Mm. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we've ran out of time, but I, just in brief, what happens now? What happens now is we've lodged a complaint with the public protector. That investigation is ongoing. We want to make sure that the relationship between the Gauteng Department of Economic Development and Family Tree Holdings is investigated and that by extension, Katara Shop Owners Association and the way in which they've been fleecing people, that also is looked into. So we have the public protector report that is underway, the investigation thereof, I should say. But we also have at the Gauteng Provincial Legislature um, the findings of the sixth administration eco economic development 
Development Committee that are now going to be implemented. That finding was for a forensic investigation to be done to look into that relationship, as I alluded to. So both the public protectors investigation is underway, as is the investigation that has been instituted uh, by the Gauteng Provincial Legislature. We will continue to keep a very close eye on those two proceedings, and we're hoping that justice will be served. I am much appreciated. Always a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so very much. Thank you for your time. That was Ayanda Ali there, the communications director and the uh, Houteng uh, member of the uh, uh, legislature there uh, for Bosa joining us uh, this evening to give us their views and insights on the latest developments with the Katoras uh, Shop Owners Association and Family Tree Holders uh, Holdings rather and uh, what they deem to be a serious challenge that needs addressing there. Let me thank my earlier guest, Ipom Tembu, the chairperson of the Family Tree Holdings, who came through to share their stance on the matter. On that note, uh, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free. Talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at Soweto TV. Call us 081 531 8857. From myself, Tabu Mulukwani, and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the latest news updates coming up next with Preeti Gwenya. Bye bye.